The Kanem Bornu Empire was an empire that existed in modern Chad and Nigeria. It was known to the Arabian geographers as the Kanem Empire from the 9th century AD onward and lasted as the independent kingdom of Bornu, the Bornu Empire until 1900. The Kanem Empire c. was located in the present countries of Chad, Nigeria and Libya. At its height it encompassed an area covering not only most of Chad, but also parts of southern Libya and eastern Niger, northeastern Nigeria and northern Cameroon. The Bornu Empire was a state of what is now northeastern Nigeria, in time becoming even larger than Kanem, incorporating areas that are today parts of Chad, Niger, Sudan, and Cameroon, is existed from 1380s to 1893. The early history of the empire is mainly known from the Royal Chronicle or Gergum discovered in 1851 by the German traveller Heinrich Barth. Theories on the origin of Kanem Kanem was located at the southern end of the Trans-Saharan trade route between Tripoli and the region of Lake Chad. Besides its urban elite it also included a confederation of nomadic peoples who spoke languages of the Teta Daza group. <inaudible> Founding by immigrants c. 600 BC The origins of Kanem are unclear. Some older histories connect the creation of Kanem Bornu with exodus from the collapsed Assyrian Empire c. 600 BC to the northeast of Lake Chad. More recent theories tend to support the idea of a closer origin for the migration. Topic: <inaudible> Founding by local Kanembu Dugwa C. 700 AD. According to a more accepted theory, the kingdom of Kanem began forming around 700 AD under the nomadic Tabu-speaking Kanembu. The Kanembu were supposedly forced southwest towards the fertile lands around Lake Chad by political pressure and desiccation in their former range. The area already possessed independent, walled city-states belonging to the Sao culture. Under the leadership of the Duguwa dynasty, the Kanembu would eventually dominate the Sao, but not before adopting many of their customs. War between the two continued up to the late 16th century. Agisimba origin One theory proposes that the lost state of Agisimba mentioned by Ptolemy in the middle of the 2nd century AD was the antecedent of the Kanem Empire. <laughs> Duguwa dynasty Kanembu. Kanem was located at the southern end of the Trans-Saharan trade route between Tripoli and the region of Lake Chad. The Kanembu eventually abandoned their nomadic lifestyle and founded a capital around 700 AD under the first documented Kanembu king, Mai, known as Sef of Saif. The capital of Njimi, the word for south, in the Teta language, grew in power and influence under Sef's son, Dugu. This transition marked the beginning of the Duguwa dynasty. The Mais of the Duguwa were regarded as divine kings and belonged to the ruling establishment known as the Magumi. Despite changes in dynastic power, the Megumi and the title of Mai would persevere for over a thousand years. Kanem is mentioned as one of three great empires in Balad el Sudan, by al Yaqabai in 872. <laughs> Adoption of Islam c. 1068 AD <laughs> Rise of the Saifawa dynasty The major factor that influenced the later history of the state of Kanem was the early penetration of Islam. North African traders, Berbers and Arabs, brought the new religion. Towards 1068, Humay, a member of the Saifawa establishment, who was already a Muslim, discarded the last Duguwa king Selma from power and thus established the new dynasty of the Saifawa. Islam offered the Saifawa rulers the advantage of new ideas from Arabia and the Mediterranean world, as well as literacy and administration but many people resisted the new religion favoring traditional beliefs and practices. When Humay had assumed power on the basis of his strong Islamic following, for example, it is believed that the Duguwa, Kanembu began some kind of internal opposition. This pattern of conflict and compromise with Islam occurs repeatedly in Chadian history. 
Foundation of the new capital N. Jimmy When the ruling dynasty changed, the royal establishment abandoned its capital of Manan and settled in the new capital N. Jimmy further south of Kanem the word for south in the Teta language. By the 13th century, Kanem's rule expanded. At the same time, the Kanembu people drew closer to the new rulers and increased the growing population in the new capital of N. Jimmy. Even though the Kanembu became the main power base of the Seifuwa, Kanem's rulers continued to travel frequently throughout the kingdom and especially towards Bornu, west of Lake Chad. Herders and farmers alike recognized the government's power and acknowledged their allegiance by paying tribute. Topic. Expansion to Bornu Topic. My Dunama Dabalemi Kanem's expansion peaked during the long and energetic reign of Mai Dunama Dabalemi ca. 1203-1242, also of the Saifawa dynasty. Dabalemi initiated diplomatic exchanges with sultans in North Africa and apparently arranged for the establishment of a special hostel in Cairo to facilitate pilgrimages to Mecca. During his reign, he declared jihad against the surrounding tribes and initiated an extended period of conquest. After consolidating their territory around Lake Chad the Fazan region in present-day Libya fell under Kanem's authority, and the empire's influence extended westward to Kano in present-day Nigeria and thus included Bornu, eastward to Wadai, and southward to the Adamawa grasslands in present-day Cameroon. Portraying these boundaries on maps can be misleading, however, because the degree of control extended in ever-weakening gradations from the core of the empire around Njimi to remote peripheries, from which allegiance and tribute were usually only symbolic. Moreover, cartographic lines are static and misrepresent the mobility inherent in nomadism and migration, which were common. The loyalty of peoples and their leaders was more important in governance than the physical control of territory. Dabalemi devised a system to reward military commanders with authority over the people they conquered. This system, however, tempted military officers to pass their positions to their sons, thus transforming the office from one based on achievement and loyalty to the Mai into one based on hereditary nobility. Dabalemi was able to suppress this tendency, but after his death, dissension among his sons weakened the Saifawa dynasty. Dynastic feuds degenerated into civil war, and Kanem's outlying peoples soon ceased paying tribute. Topic. Shift of the Seifuwa court from Kanem to Bornu By the end of the 14th century, internal struggles and external attacks had torn Kanem apart. Between 1359 and 1383, seven Mays reigned, but Bulala invaders from the area around Lake Fitri to the east killed five of them. This proliferation of Mays resulted in numerous claimants to the throne and led to a series of internecine wars. Finally, around 1380 the Bulala forced Mai Umar Idrismi to abandon Njimi and move the Kanembu people to Bornu on the western edge of Lake Chad. Over time, the intermarriage of the Kanembu and Bornu peoples created a new people and language, the Kanori. But even in Bornu, the Saifawa dynasty's troubles persisted. During the first three quarters of the 15th century, for example, 15 Mays occupied the throne. Then, around 1460 Mai Ali Dunamami defeated his rivals and began the consolidation of Bornu. He built a fortified capital at Nazargamu, to the west of Lake Chad in present-day Nigeria, the first permanent home a Saifawa Mai had enjoyed in a century. So successful was the Saifawa rejuvenation that by the early 16th century Mai Idris Katakarmabi (1487–1509) was able to defeat the Bulala and retake Njimi, the former capital. The empire's leaders, however, remained at Nazargamu because its lands were more productive agriculturally and better suited to the raising of cattle. Ali Gaji was the first ruler of the empire to assume the title of caliph. Topic. Kanem Bornu period With control over both capitals, the Saifawa dynasty became more powerful than ever. The two states were merged, but political authority still rested in Bornu. Kanem Bornu peaked during the reign of the statesman Mai Idris Aluma. C. 1571-1603. Aluma is remembered for his military skills, administrative reforms, and Islamic piety. His main adversaries were the Hausa to the west, the Tuareg and Tubu to the north, and the Bulala to the east. 
One epic poem extols his victories in 330 wars and more than 1,000 battles. His innovations included the employment of fixed military camps with walls, permanent sieges and scorched earth tactics, where soldiers burned everything in their path, armored horses and riders, and the use of Berber camelry, Katoko boatmen, and iron-helmeted musketeers trained by Turkish military advisors. His active diplomacy featured relations with Tripoli, Egypt, and the Ottoman Empire, which sent a 200-member ambassadorial party across the desert to Aluma's court at Nazargamu. Aluma also signed what was probably the first written treaty or ceasefire in Chadian history. Aluma introduced a number of legal and administrative reforms based on his religious beliefs and Islamic law Sharia. He sponsored the construction of numerous mosques and made a pilgrimage to Mecca, where he arranged for the establishment of a hostel to be used by pilgrims from his empire. As with other dynamic politicians, Aluma's reformist goals led him to seek loyal and competent advisors and allies, and he frequently relied on slaves who had been educated in noble homes. Aluma regularly sought advice from a council composed of heads of the most important clans. He required major political figures to live at the court, and he reinforced political alliances through appropriate marriages Aluma himself was the son of a Kanori father and a Bulala mother. Kanem Bornu under Aluma was strong and wealthy. Government revenue came from tribute or booty, if the recalcitrant people had to be conquered, sales of slaves, and duties on and participation in trans-Saharan trade. Unlike West Africa, the Chadian region did not have gold. Still, it was central to one of the most convenient trans-Saharan routes. Between Lake Chad and Fazan lay a sequence of well-spaced wells and oases, and from Fazan there were easy connections to North Africa and the Mediterranean Sea. Many products were sent north, including natron sodium carbonate, cotton, cola nuts, ivory, ostrich feathers, perfume, wax, and hides, and slaves. Imports included salt, horses, silks, glass, muskets, and copper. Aluma took a keen interest in trade and other economic matters. He is credited with having the roads cleared, designing better boats for Lake Chad, introducing standard units of measure for grain, and moving farmers into new lands. In addition, he improved the ease and security of transit through the empire with the goal of making it so safe that a lone woman clad in gold might walk with none to fear but God. Topic. Successors. Most of the successors of Idris Aluma are only known from the meager information provided by the Dewan. Some of them are noted for having undertaken the pilgrimage to Mecca others for their piety. In the 18th century Bornu was affected by several long-lasting famines. Topic. Decline of the Bornu Empire The administrative reforms and military brilliance of Aluma sustained the empire until the mid-17th century, when its power began to fade. By the late 18th century, Bornu rule extended only westward, into the land of the Hausa of modern Nigeria. The empire was still ruled by the Mai who was advised by his councillors in the state council or Nokina. The members of his Nokina council included his sons and daughters and other royalty the Mena and non-royalty New men. The Kokenawa included free men and slave eunuchs known as Kachala. The latter had come to play a very important part in Bornu politics, as eunuchs did in many Muslim courts. Topic: <laughs> Fulani Jihad. Around that time, Fulani people, invading from the west, were able to make major inroads into Bornu. By the early 19th century, Kanem Bornu was clearly an empire in decline, and in 1808 Fulani warriors conquered Nazargamu. Usman Dan Fodio led the Fulani thrust and proclaimed a jihad holy war on the irreligious Muslims of the area. His campaign eventually affected Kanem Bornu and inspired a trend toward Islamic orthodoxy. <laughs> Muhammad al kanami But Muhammad al-Amin al-Kanami contested the Fulani advance. Kanem was a Muslim scholar and non-Saifawa warlord who had put together an alliance of Shua Arabs, Kanembu, and other semi-nomadic peoples. He eventually built in 1814 a capital at Kakawa in present-day Nigeria. Saifawa Mays remained titular monarchs until 1846. 
In that year, the last Mai, in league with the Wadai Empire, precipitated a civil war. It was at that point that Kanemi's son, Umar, became king, thus ending one of the longest dynastic reigns in international history. <laughs> Post-Saifawa era Although the dynasty ended, the kingdom of Kanem Bornu survived. Umar eschewed the title Mai for the simpler designation Shehu from the Arabic Sheikh, could not match his father's vitality, and gradually allowed the kingdom to be ruled by advisors wazirs. Bornu began a further decline as a result of administrative disorganization, regional particularism, and attacks by the militant Wadai Empire to the east. The decline continued under Umar's sons. In 1893, Rabah az Zubair led an invading army from eastern Sudan and conquered Bornu. Following his expulsion shortly thereafter, the state was absorbed by the British-ruled entity which eventually became known as Nigeria. From that point on, a remnant of the old kingdom was and still is, allowed to continue to exist in subjection to the various governments of the country as the Borno Emirate. He was defeated by French soldiers in 1900. Topic see also Saifawa dynasty Chronology of the Saifawa Kanem Bornu Dewan Gurgam Ibn Fertu Ibn Fertuwa Kingdom of Bagarmi Wadai Empire History of Nigeria List of Sunni Muslim Dynasties Topic References Topic Bibliography Alkali, Noor, and Bala Usman, eds. Studies in the History of Pre-Colonial Borno Zaria, Northern Nigerian Publishing, 1983 Barkindo, Bawaro, The Early States of the Central Sudan, Kanem, Borno and Some of Their Neighbors to See. 1500 AD, in, J. Ajayi und M. Crowder, ed., History of West Africa, B.D. I, 3rd ed. Harlow 1985, 225-254. Barth, Heinrich, Travel and Discoveries in North and Central Africa, Vol. 2, New York, 1858, 15-29, 581-602. Brenner, Lewis, The Shehus of Kakawa, Oxford 1973. Canem Borno, in Thomas Colello, ed. Chad, A Country Study. Washington, GPO for the Library of Congress, 1988. Dewey, Remy, Regards Quasés entre deux ports de desert, Hypotheses, 2013, 383-93 Cohen, Ronald, The Canory of Bornu, New York 1967. Hallam, W., The Life and Times of Rabbah Fadl Allah, Devon 1977. Hura Baron, Vincent, A History of Borno, Trans-Saharan African Empire to Failing Nigerian State London, Hearst and Oxford University Press, 2017. Hughes, William 2007. A Class Book of Modern Geography paperback. Whitefish, M.T., Kessinger Publishing. p. 390 pages. ISBN 1-4326-8180-X. Lang, Dirk, Le Dewan des Sultans du Canem Bornu, Wiesbaden 1977. A Sudanic Chronicle, The Borno Expeditions of Idris Alama, 1564-1576, Stuttgart 1987. Ethnogenesis from within the Chadic State, Paydeuma, 39, 261-277, The Chad Region as a Crossroads, in, M. L. Fassi, H. G., General History of Africa, Vol. 3, UNESCO, London 1988, pp. 436-460, The Kingdoms and Peoples of Chad, in, D. T. Neon, ed., General History of Africa, Vol. 4, UNESCO, London 1984, pp. 238-260. 65, an Introduction to the History of Kanem Borno, The Prologue of the Dewan, Borno Museum Society Newsletter 76 84, 79 103, The Founding of Kanem by Assyrian Refugees ca. 600 BCE, Documentary, Linguistic, and Archaeological Evidence, Boston 2011. Lavers, John, Adventures in the Chronology of the States of the Chad Ba'an, ed., by Daniel Barito and Charlotte de Graffenried presented at the Datation et Chronologie dans le Bassin du Lac Chad. Dating and Chronology in the Lake Chad Basin, Bondi, Orstam, 1993, pp. 255-67 Levsion, Nehemia, and John Hopkins, Corpus of Early Arabic Sources for West African History, Cambridge 1981. Nachtigal, Gustav, Sahara und Sudan, Berlin, 1879-1881, Leipzig 1989 Nachdruck Graz 1967, ENGL. Ubers, von Humphrey Fischer. Oliver, Roland and Anthony Atmore 2005. Africa since 1800, 5th edition. 
Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. p. 405 pages. ISBN 0-521-83615-8. Shillington, Kevin. 2005. Encyclopedia of African History, Vol. 1 AG. New York, Routledge. pp. 1912 pages. ISBN 1 57958 245 1. Smith, Abdullahi, The Early States of the Central Sudan, in J. Ajayi and M. Crowder, ed., History of West Africa, Vol. 1, 1st ed., London, 1971, 158 183. Ervoy, Yves, L'Empire du Bornu, Paris 1949. Trimmingham, Spencer, A History of Islam in West Africa, Oxford 1962. Ervoy, Yves, L'Empire du Bornu, Paris 1949. Van de Mirup, Mark, A History of the Ancient Near East, 2nd ed., Oxford 2007. Zachary, Mykorema, Contribution à l'histoire des populations du Sud-Est nigérien, Niamey 1985. Zeltner, Jean-Claude, Pages de Histoire du Canem, Pays Chadian, Paris 1980. Topic. Further reading Barkindo, Bauro. The Early States of the Central Sudan, Canem, Borno and Some of Their Neighbors to See. 1500 AD. In, J. Ajayi und M. Crowder, H. G., History of West Africa, B.D. I. 3. AUSG. Harlow 1985, 225-254. Lang, Dirk, Ancient Kingdoms of West Africa, Africa-Centered and Canaanite-Israelite Perspectives, Dettelbach 2004, the book suggests a pre-Christian origin of Canaan in connection with the Phoenician expansion. Ervoy, Eve, L'Empire du Bornu, Paris 1949. Lang, Dirk. Immigration of the Chadic speaking Sao towards 600 BCE. Borno Museum Society Newsletter, 72 to 75, 2008, 84 to 106. Topic: External links. The Story of Africa, Kenem Borno, BBC World Service. Timeline of Rulers.